up everyone it's the wise bubbler here and today i'm going to show you how to create a cryptocurrency converter using two free apis let's jump in so here we have our cryptocurrency converter and we can see here we have coins and currencies so let's choose a currency for example euro and a coin for example ethereum and we will want to convert see how many how many euros three ethereum is so if we click convert we can see here that three ethereum is 10,773.9 euros that's a lot <laughs> um so now i'm going to jump in to how we actually got this to work and this is just one iteration you can actually flip them and show how many uh you know three eth uh how many three euros is an eth and and stuff like that this is just one example on how to use the api and the point is to just show you how to use the api connector to get what you want um in bubble so Let's jump into the editor and see how this all looks. So first of all, before we get started, I wanted to just talk about the two APIs I'm using. The first one is the CoinCap API. This is a free API and you can just type in Google um, CoinCap API, click on the link and here I'll actually just show you CoinCap API. And if you click on the link, it will take you to this link. And if you click RESTful API docs, it'll take you back right here to the assets. And this is actually a free API. Um, it's really nice because it gives you one, all the assets. It allows you to limit it. So if you're calling, for example, all the cryptocurrencies, you may get like two or 3000 coins and um, that will obviously clog up your bubble app when it's loading. So here there's an option to limit it. So we're gonna limit it to 50 and there's no API key. So it's simply a get request, meaning we're actually calling uh, CoinCap and saying, hey, give me all the assets you have up to 50 and I want them, they're gonna order them by market cap or by rank, however they order them. And I'm going to, let's just see, when you call this API, this is the actual result you're getting. So you're getting the ID, the rank, the symbol, the name, and most important here is the price in USD, and I'll show you later why that's important. So let's go back to the bubble editor and see how that looks. So now we're in the bubble editor in the CoinCap um, API call and we can just see I just created an API. I didn't change any settings. I just called it CoinCap all cryptocurrencies. I did a get request and I just copied literally this exact link. I did copy paste into here and I put in a parameter. I did add parameter and I put in limit and I put 50 because that is the maximum amount of currencies I want to get. And I made it private because I don't want this to be dynamic. I just want, again, max 50 coins. So that's it for the CoinCap API. So now we're gonna get all that data about all the cryptocurrencies, the 50 cryptocurrencies. And the next thing we have to do is figure out, okay, in this call, we're actually getting the price in USD. So the next thing we need is actually to convert that USD to the currency, the fiat currency we want. So euros, Japanese yen, etc. So now we're gonna close this API and look at the next API I used, which is on Rapid API. So if you don't know Rapid API, it's just a platform with you know tens of thousands of APIs. And here, the way to actually access this is you go on rapidapi.com and you finish the login process. And then you go on API Hub and you're actually just gonna search for currency exchange. And you'll see it's a third one. If you just click on currency exchange and it'll pull this up. And as you can see, it's free. So you don't need to pay or get an API key from this, but you will need an account on um, Rapid API to actually access this. So make sure you sign up to the platform. And here we can see there are two different options. Um, the list of quotes and the exchange. So this is great because what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull that list of all the fiat currencies that are available and then we can do the exchange um, of those currencies between each other. Okay, so here we can see that we have um, something pretty familiar. We have that get request and then we can just copy this URL and then we have these headers and these are the equivalent of shared headers which you can use um, in bubble, pretty easy to add. So I'll show you in a minute. And basically what you're gonna do is copy this as the key and this as the value for both of these. Um, and then we can also see that here, we're just gonna get the list of all the currencies, the fiat currencies. And here we do the actual exchange. And so here, similarly, we have that get, we have that URL. And because we do shared headers, these will apply to both the API calls. But here we have one thing different, which is parameters and that we have in our bubble API connector. And so the first parameters key is from, the second is to, and the third is Q, which would be quantity. But for now, we're just gonna use from and to because we can always multiply it in bubble by the quantity. 
and here is the um, currency symbol. So um, let's have a look and see how this API will look inside the Bubble API connector. So if we go here and we go to Rapid API Currency Exchange, we can see that we have those shared headers. So if you just add shared header, we can see that we have the key and the value. And then we have that first one, which is the convert USD to currency. So um, I just called it convert USD, but um, because I'll explain in a minute why, but we just, I just copied that URL from the Rapid API and I copied the from and to keys. I added parameters from to and just added in USD and AUD. Um, and again, I'll explain in a minute why I made this private and this not. And then the second call, there was no parameters. It was just simply copying the URL, creating a get request and copying the URL. And so now we have all three of our API connections that we need. So let's go over this one more time. So when we the coin cap, we're getting all the cryptocurrencies. And in those cryptocurrencies, why when we do this call, we're also getting the price in USD. And then here, when we do the convert, we can actually do the from USD. So we can take that price in USD and convert it to whatever currency we need. Um, and so I made it private because we're always going to be converting from USD because that is what we, the currency we have the, US, the coin price at. And then the second one is actually pulling just all the currencies, all the fiat currencies to be more specific. So um, let's see how we do this in Bubble. So I created a simple pop-up where I'm going to load all the coins and then I'm going to load all the fiat currency. So we can see here that here the type is text because actually the response we're getting from the Rapid API is going to be text. So it's not JSON um, like usual. It is actually going to be text. And when we initialize this, we can see that it's coming out um, in, well, this is JSON, um, but the convert action in the data type is actually text. And when we initialize it, we just see the exact conversion rate in text. So we don't actually get any JSON, which is nice. It's easier to work with in Bubble. Um, so over here, we have all fiat currencies, which is just going to be a list of texts. Um, and then over here, we have all coins. Um, and we can see here that API call data. So it didn't change the name, but you, essentially what I'm saying, the type is, is going to be um, the coin cap API. So it's going to be coin cap, all cryptocurrencies. That is the data type. I don't know why it hasn't changed the name. It just changed it, kept it as API call data, but you can see that if I switch it, um, it becomes red, but I'm going to switch it back to all crypto data. And I just went to get data from external API. So let's just delete this and get data from external API. And I went to the coin cap API, get all cryptocurrencies. And I chose data, which is pretty important here. And here I did the same thing, um, get data from external API and I went to rapid API, rapid API currencies and that I didn't have to choose data because the type is text. And the last thing we did is I loaded the repeating group fiat list of text over here. So repeating group fiat is that pop up all that repeating group with all the fiat currencies. And here I have repeating group coins list of API call data. And I have this again as API call data, which is the same thing. Um, the reason I have them in repeating groups and not directly here is actually because if we wanted to flip them, um, i.e. if we wanted to switch the conversion from coins to currencies, etc., cetera, um, it's better to have an ex uh, one source to call all the data instead of calling it every time. So in this, for this use case, it's not relevant, but for other use cases, it may be helpful. Um, and lastly, I just have amount, which is just an input, which is an integer. And uh, it's not so important, but I created a way to increment it easily. And, but that is not important for the video. And the last thing is we have this convert call. So let's look at how this convert call works. And I'm actually going to be calling the Rapid API currency exchange convert USD to currency. So if you go to the Rapid API currency exchange convert USD to currency, we made this in action because we want to do this in a workflow when we're doing the exchange. And we can see here the only parameter we, need, we can change is the to the one, the currency we want to convert to, because we already have, we fixed it at USD because that's the price we're getting from the coin cap API call. And we're getting the price in USD. And so we're going to do the conversion. And then once we get the conversion, we can actually, we're going to display the data. So I'm going to display the data in the parent group here. So we're going to call this group number one and the actual 
when parent group number is not empty, we're gonna display the parent group's number. So over here, we can see result of step one. So this is gonna be a text. So it's gonna be the conversion text. So if it's you know USD to AUD, maybe 1.38 as a text, and we're gonna actually convert it to a number. And then we're gonna multiply it by the dropdown coins value price USD converted to number. So remember, when the dropdown, we have all the coin cap data that we got sent. And in there was also the price in USD. And so we're taking that price in USD from there and converting it to a number because it's right now as text. And we're multiplying that by the input amounts value. So that's how many coins we actually want to see. We want to see in euros, how many, how many euros is three Ethereum worth? So we're multiplying by the input amount, which is the amount here. And then we're displaying it in this group, in this text, essentially. Since we can't display it in the text, we're displaying it in the parent group and then call it taking the data from that group. And that's essentially what's doing the conversion. So if we go back to the page, you can see here, it takes a minute to load. We can see all the coins, let's say ETH. And we're gonna convert Japanese yen to three ETH. And we can see that that switched it to the Japanese yen. That's how much three ETH is worth in Japanese yen. So thanks for watching. You may be wondering, why is this important? Why do I need this? I can just go on coin market cap or just Google these prices. But what I'm here to tell you is this may not be useful, but it may be useful to create other products. So for example, in the next video, I'm gonna create somewhat of a Gumroad clone where you can tether the price of your products to cryptocurrency prices. And in that case, that is a valid use case for this type of converter. If you want, for example, your products to be tethered to a specific coin price, or you wanna switch the currencies of your products, um, one of these APIs may be useful, either the converter or the coin, um, coin cap API. So thanks for watching. Again, if you want access to my editor, um, I'll drop a link on the bottom where you can buy access to it. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out at the Wise Bubbler on Twitter and DSO. Thanks for watching.